Hello everybody, welcome to the latest edition of the DW Live Show. We are now on Series 2, Episode 4, and we are moving along with them. Um, these masterclasses are really, really good. We've got a fantastic one coming up today. We're going to be speaking to Jeanette Lendon from um, Jet Black Squares about smartphone photography and how you can use it for your business and for yourself. It's going to be an amazing show. We've also got the DW Live panel coming up, which has got some extra special guests in the very last clip. So stay tuned for that, guys. You're going to love it. So, um, yeah, it's been a really good week, I guess, since we last spoke. We've, um, you know, we've we've had more business on the group, more news, you know, about the roadmap. It looks like things are going well. The vaccinations are going well. So. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. So, um, first thing we're going to do is say a big thank you to all the people involved with the show and all you guys for tuning in. We're really uh, grateful for it. We've got quite a few of you in the um, in the chat room on Facebook and also we've got people watching on link, uh, sorry, on YouTube as well. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. We really appreciate it. Spread the word about the DW Live show with these free masterclasses. Um, so yeah, big thank you to the people involved with the show. We've got our friends at Events Case for registration. We've got our good friends uh, Dominic and Callum, and um, at the team at um, where you're from, Dom Stream. <laughs> That's it, from Stream. Um, and then also we got our season sponsors um, who are Events Air. Um, and without any further ado, you know, every week we're giving you a bit of education about the platform that is Events Air and all of the great things they do. So we've got a little message from them uh, here for you guys now. So we know that each event is unique and that's why we created on it to deliver for all sizes and complexities. And when we talk about live delivery content, we are looking to provide as much control as possible whilst offering a high end production value. And so we created the Aircar Studio, which I'm going to show you now. And here we are in the Aircar Studio. Currently, I'm in the green room, which is the area where you ensure that all of your speakers are prepped and ready for their presentation by being able to check both their microphones and their cameras. The next stage is for me to go over to the preview stage, which if you think about this is, you know, waiting in the wings, stage left. As you can see, I've now moved across. You can have up to nine feeds in this area made up of speakers such as myself, screen shares and media sources. Now, once you've selected your preview sources and your displayed layout, a simple click of the button and you go live on the main screen, as you can see. Now, to seamlessly cut from this view to another, it's just a case of selecting more feeds, hitting the layout and here we are. So thank you for joining me, Leanne. We also have at the bottom a series of interactive tools that you can use. We've got live Q&A, we have live polling, and the ability to push audience members into breakout rooms. And now, if you want to get a member of the audience up on stage to really get that um, engagement, um, absolutely no problem. You simply click on a raised hand and invite them up and they will be put live onto the main stage. And finally, on the below, you can also see you have a series of speaker and live producer communication tools to make sure that everything runs smoothly. So I hope you can see the Aircar Studio is a hugely powerful tool and really will cover for all of your event needs. If you'd like to know more and experience it for yourself, please do get in touch today. Thank you very much. Big thank you to Andy uh, Leatherland from Aventer there. He's a UK sales representative. So if you need anything, I know Andy's normally tuned into the chat room. Let us know and we can pass your information on. Anyway, so um, 
just want to say, as usual, we're live on Facebook Live, um, on the Facebook group, the Delgate Wranglers Facebook group, and also on YouTube as well, on our channel. Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you could give us a follow on YouTube, that would be really helpful. Thank you. <laughs> um, so let's have a quick look in the chat room while I'm here. Um, big hello to Karen, Sheena, um, Sheena. Dom, Dom is in the chat room. Um, I spoke to Dom yesterday. He's back on the mend. He's going to be back on the show in a few weeks. So um, big welcome back to Dom. Um, he's getting there now. Um, hi, Swati. Hi, Jan. Hi, Anika, as always. Lisa Carpenter. Hey, Nikki. How are you? Nikki Dews, how are you? Nikki Mitchell. Uh, Mandeep. Hey, Mandeep. How are you? One of the funniest, most positive people I know he is. Sammy, Amanda, Lisa, Karina. Loads of you. Leah. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We really appreciate it. So, um, on with the show. Really delighted to have Jeanette on the show with us today. Um, Jeanette works for, um, well, it's her company, Jet Black Squares. Hello, Jeanette. How are you? Hi, I'm fine. Thank you. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. Oh, uh, no, we're really delighted to have you on. Do you want to, uh, before we get into the presentation, um, do you want to give us a quick rundown about what you guys do and, you know, what your role is? Okay, so um, Jet Black Squares uh, runs smartphone photography masterclasses um, for corporate clients and for grannies who just want to take pictures of their grandchildren as well. So it's for anyone who's got a phone, really. Um, and over lockdown, we sort of went online a little bit more than what we were doing before. And so now we run um, virtual sessions where I basically go to a location of your choice in London and live stream my phone directly to a platform where you can see exactly how to spot, take and edit the photos as we go along. So it's really nice in real time. So it's good fun. Um, yeah. And we also do sort of like workshops to show you how you can um, get better social media images and things like that as well. Wow, it sounds amazing. I mean, um, and just for the record, you do know I'm contractually obliged to let you know that I'm married to a professional photographer, <laughs> Diane, who's watching in the chat room. So, uh, but no, but you, you completely like, there's a place, there's there's things for professional photographers and then there's things that you can do on your phone. So there's a place for for both sides of it as well. Not everything needs to be done on a, on a DLR, does it? You know, it, hence why we're having this show. So um, I know we're going to run on with the platform, uh, with, with the presentation. I'm running the slides. So sorry, guys, it's going to be a bit clunky because we had a few technical issues. So would now be a good time to share the screen, um, Jeanette, and then I'll leave it over to you to do the talking and just let me know when to move on. Oh, that'd be brilliant. Thank you. We're going to have a Chris Whitty moment of a next slide, please. We'll be doing a bit of a Chris Whitty there. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, thank you. That'd be brilliant if you could start it. That's great. Um, so, yeah, basically, as Neil says, there is a, you know, a type of a place for smartphone photography. I am not saying this is like basically so that I don't um, a, a, a upset all the professional photographers out there. Um, this my my view is that it's got to sit seamlessly with your professional photography so you still need your professional photography in your business but unless you're kim kardashian and have got a professional photographer with you following you around all the time you know it's not achievable so you need to slot in and every bit of information or anything that you put up on social media it sits alongside it so it's got to work okay and it's got to go together um and it's got to look professional and so this is where your smartphone can come in i mean we used to have um, you know, smartphones that, that took pictures. We've now got cameras that make phone calls. So, you know, basically the technology has got so good now, it's literally just knowing how to use it. Um, the big thing is the fact that, especially over this last year, your content needs to be current and it needs to be a reflecting of the times. Um, this slide here is just um, an example. The Evening Standard put this out in January um you know last uh not last month we're in march aren't we in january 2021 and it's basically saying you know lockdown and I look at those comments they're all about oh i'm going down to london if you can sit in a vest top in january oh it looks boiling down there the whole message was completely lost um and, and the ne next slide please chris witty um and the next one as well you know you can see here the fact that this this amazing company um, choose love it's in, in Carnaby Street and you know it's got a fantastic um, ethos behind it do you know what they did a, um, 
a, a sponsored post on Facebook running for about two months over Christmas. And unfortunately, the majority of the comments on their Facebook page were all about no social distancing. I'm not going to that place because no one's wearing masks. Isn't this atrocious? Oh. And it's like, actually, if you look at the pictures, they were the year before's Christmas lights. So they'd used an old picture to put up but unfortunately the message got lost. Yeah. So this is why it's so important to, you know, to make sure that your your images are current. And at the moment it is difficult. We can't have people in, you know, we've still got social distancing and things could change at any moment. So this is where, like I say, you know, we can do it ourselves and just to fill up those, those um, the things that you need until you can get your professional photography back again, or as I say, to work alongside it as well. Um, so I'm going to just give you a few tips on how to get the best out of your camera. Um, the main things, composition. So what your picture looks like, how you place it, exposure, how much light's coming in and working with your light as well. And one thing that people don't realise is your camera orientation, how you hold your camera and whether it's upside down or not. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go over a few of those things as well. Um, so the first thing that you should do for any camera is to turn your grid lines on. Um, in an, on an iPhone, now I've got an iPhone simply because you know what it's like, you get wedded into, you know, you, you bought the Apple brand and also they get handed down the generations as a new one comes along in our house. Um, so I've got an iPhone, not the best phone by any means, but it's just the one that I've got. So if you've got an iPhone, go into your settings, go down to camera and put your grid on. OK, if you've got an Android phone, you go into your um, settings within your camera itself. Um, don't worry, I'll, I'll write all this down for you if you if you like lose it or Google it. It's a lot easier. Um, go into the, the um, settings in your camera and you should have assisted grid. Um, put three by three on and you'll be fine. OK, now the reason you put your grid on, it's got so many things. Right. First of all, in photography, there's something called the rule of thirds. OK, the rule of thirds, and I'll show you in the next slide in a second, um, just makes you off centre your pictures, just to give them a little bit more, you know, interest in your images. It gives you straight lines. And if you're shooting pictures of a venue, for example, you want to get those straight lines. You want to get, you know, as straight as you can. And you can use this um, with your grid to help that as well. So the grid is is so important and it, it's just so easy. And I don't know why it's not on when you get your camera, to be perfectly honest, because it's sort of like a bit of a no brainer, really. Um, so keep that on all the time if you can. It really does help. Quick, quick um, question so from me, Jeanette. Sorry, Sorry? Jeanette, quick question from me. Quick question from me. Um, would you say, does that rule of thirds apply for, you know, because a lot of people will be taking um, Instagram um, stories and Facebook stories. So is it the same group, you know, rule of thirds for, for those photographs as well, or is it slightly different? No, I would say for anything, really. It just gives it a little bit more interest, that's all. I mean, it's no rule. You're not exactly, you know, going to get struck off if yeah. you don't do it. Um, and, <laughs> you know, if you're doing a reflection, for example, you, you want that symmetry. So that might be slightly different. Um, but also... Yeah. If you've got your rule of thirds, and say for this picture here, I didn't take it, by the way, this is just off a Google picture. Um, but you can see you've got space at the top then to put text or to put your logo if you need it as well. So it gives you that option that you can, you know, you can do a, a put text on there or logos or something as well. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Next um, slide. Okay, so back. Yep, yeah, next, next slide, please. <laughs> <laughs> We'll do a little shuffle, a little dance. Next slide. Um, okay, so rule of thirds. So sorry, it's the most boring tree in the world, but it does sort of just highlight what you can do. So the tree on the left is in the middle. So you've got a road in front of it, slap bang in the middle as well. On the right hand side, you can see how it's now off centered. So I've just used those rule of thirds there. And again, do you remember how I said we've got a space at the top now? You can put your logo, you can put text, you know, special offer or opening soon or whatever. And it doesn't detract away from um, the actual picture itself. And as I say, it just off centers it, gives it that little bit more interest as well. 
And especially if you've got fantastic clouds. I love clouds. Yeah, a bit of cloud porn. Love it. Brilliant. Um, just makes your pictures look, again, a little bit more dramatic, um, which you can do in editing afterwards. Um, OK, so on the next slide, um, we've got exposure. Now, exposure is how much light comes into your camera. Now, the way that we can control this, if you touch on your screen of your phone, on an iPhone, a sun comes up. Usually on an Android, you've either got a light bulb or a sun. Now, if it's not coming up, again, you might have to turn something off. It's a bit tricky with me doing it with so many people. So just Google how to get your exposure settings. Now, if you touch on your screen on your iPhone and run your finger down, your picture gets darker. If you run your finger up, your picture gets lighter. And with an Android, it depends on where it, you know, if you've got a, a light bulb or a sun going up or down or left or right, just see which way it's going. What you tend to do is for a wide shot like this, touch on the brightest part. So on here, I've touched on the, on the sky. And that means that you're going to keep, keep all the details in. So those clouds, you're going to see the edges of the clouds. So for a, a building, for example, if you want, if you don't touch on that, you might just get a blown out sky. Well, actually, you want the blue sky, you want the sun coming in, you want all the, the colours and everything else that you can get with it. And this keeps those details in for you. Now, if you're going to do a close up shot, then you've got to you've got to sort of decide whether you want that to be in focus, because that's also your focal point or how much light's coming in as well. OK, so you, you sort of got to weigh up between the two. The only camera that does both is the Huawei, which is really annoying because you can't use the Huawei in quite a lot of countries now. Um, but the Huawei has got by the best camera because like I say, you can choose, I want that focal point, I want that to be in focus, but I want that exposure. And it's got the two things on there, but it's the only camera that will do that. Um, so you can see how the picture on the right now is a little bit dark, but we've got those clouds in. But within in our editing app, which I'll tell you about um, at the end, you can paint that light in in literally two seconds flat. So on the next picture, you can see how I've now edited this picture. As I say, it literally takes two seconds to do. And we've now got it so that we've got the tree a little bit brighter. We've got the, the clouds as well. And it just brings in all those details for you. OK, and you keep the richness of the colours and everything else. And that is simply because we've got that exposure. A lot of the time with the new phones, especially, you just touch on the screen and that's all you need to do. You don't need to do anything else. But it's worth having a look. Do I want to blow out that picture so it's all white in the background? Or do I want to keep that colour as well? Um, now, camera orientation. Sorry, I'm whizzing through this. I hope it's not too, too fast. That's all right. No, crack on. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so camera orientation, one of the best tips I can give you is to turn your camera upside down. Now, turning your camera upside down in the air does nothing, OK? But turn it upside down on the floor, for example. So the picture on the left, can you see I've got the texture of the floor in there? I've got the, the sort of like the, um, the paving stones there. It's really like um, you've got that texture in and the focus is, is out of focus at the back there. The picture on the right now is upside down in a puddle. For God's sake, please check your phones are waterproof before you start putting your phones in puddles. Right? I'm just doing that so that my insurance is covered and you didn't say, well, Jeanette said I should actually turn my phone up and put it in a puddle. <laughs> Um, Jeanette, um, quick question. So I guess you're saying you're saying turn that down so that the lens is even closer to the floor. Yeah, exactly. So if you look where your yeah. lens is on your phone, it's like top right and there or wherever it is. And if you turn it upside down, you're now closer to the floor. And if you've got what a puddle, it, what a brilliant it's tip. just Oh, it just makes everything look so different. So if you've got an event, for example, and you want to show that it's busy, but you don't really want to show people there, if you've got it upside down, you can see the people blurred in the background. You can see it's busy, but it's not a traditional shot. So it just makes it look slightly different and, and a little, you know, a bit more arty farty, really. But, you know, it yeah. just works. And it's such a simple tip. Um, and again, if you've got... A, just a, a smallest puddle in the world can give you that picture on the right. So it really does show 
um, like, you know, what you can do. Um, I've just got a couple more for the ca uh, camera orientation. So um, over lockdown, I've been going slightly bonkers over this last one anyway. And um, I've started doing small world. So tiny, tiny little people, they're literally like that big. But again, turning your camera upside down and you can change the perspective. Now, the reason I'm showing you this, you're like, yeah, what's that got to do with me? At the moment, you can't have people in your venue. OK, you can't have people there. So how are you supposed to show what you've got, especially for wedding venues or for corporate venues? So why not have tiny people showing what the venue's like, for example? OK, so if I give you an example, so the next slide here, this is not my photography now. OK, um, this is an incredible wedding photographer. Um, and she basically did a whole series on a wedding of Barbie. Now, you can have Barbie and Cindy getting married. You can have Barbie and Ken getting married. You can do whatever you like. But the fact is, we're using toys to showcase your venue. And do you remember what the um, British Airways advert, I think it is, isn't it, with the two teddy bears on the flight? Um, yeah. And it might not fit in with your brand at all. It's only if it fits in. But this is a great way that you can showcase what you've got without anyone actually being there. And this is by turning a camera upside down, you're making them look life-size, you're making them look bigger. And you know, you can have some real fun with this um, by, you know, if you've got a, 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 a conference facility, you know, have the teddies or whoever there sitting there upside down with your camera and it, you can see the venue behind you, but you can see the teddies there as well. As I say, it's got to fit in with your branding and it's got to fit in with your whole ethos and everything else. But it's just a fun way. Get some great engagement on social media as well. Um, but it's showcasing what you've got. You've got the, the bridal suite or you've got your conference facility or the ballroom or, you know, the restaurant, something like that. It's just a great way that you I, can, I'm, like I said. And also, you know, for the venue people, it'll make your venues look massive. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like Buckingham Palace. Wow, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know, that's a, a great way of, of just a fun way if, if you think that, you know, that could work for you. Food photography. Oh, my God, I have seen some awful food photography lately on Instagram. Top tip number one, don't ever photograph food under the pass. Why, and if you've got the, the heating thing and it's an orange light and, and it's not gonna look good, whatever you do. For, so don't photograph food under the pass, please. Move it to a, a table where you've got natural light coming in if you can. Secondly, um, you know, I mean, the, the picture on the, in the middle here was a red chair that we just literally put it on, to, on the red chair and took a photo of that. Um, but so use natural light wherever you can. If you're a venue and you've got, you know, um, you use fresh produce. So when somebody might, I don't know, have grow their produce on an allotment, for example, and they're delivering it, take a photo of Bob delivering the produce from the allotment. It makes it personal and it makes it real and that's what people want um also if you need to put some light on little another little top tip here make a reflector you make a reflector by covering a cereal box with tin foil okay and that will shine light back onto your subject without having to use flash Flash is a devil. Don't ever use flash. It's just hideous on a phone. It will just look awful. So use a reflector, just angle it so you've got that lovely light coming on. And I'll tell you, know, you Jeanette, it, Jeanette, sorry, mm. just interrupted it. Um, Diane yeah. will be your best mate because she hates flash and she loves reflectors. So <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it's just, you know, and if you want to, if you get a bigger box, you can put the shiny side of the tin foil on one side and the matte side on the other. So, you know, you've got the option then of doing the two. You can buy a reflector if you want to, but to be honest, you don't need to. Just use a little bit of tin foil and just hold it back. But, you know, and different colors, the, as, well. And different colors as well, Jeanette. I know, um, I know Daya's like a gold one. 
which gives a warm, yeah, the gold, a warm effect. Really warm and lovely. I would say for food, especially, you want to have that as natural as you can. So, you know, you obviously want to, want to make it look really fresh and, and, you know, really inviting food. So as natural as you can, try and do that. Great. Um, right. Here are some useful apps. Um, there's just about four useful apps that I think are invaluable to, to smartphone photography. Snapseed. Snapseed is basically Photoshop in a phone. Um, it is fantastic it's easy to use i am so lazy i tell you if i take a picture i'm not going to spend hours editing i take about 20 seconds to edit a picture and that's it done can't be asked life's too short um so basically snapseed just it's just brilliant use it i can send over or i can um if i can send a um pdf of everything snapseed can do um, you're welcome to have that definitely. Yeah, now what we'll do, what we'll do is at the end of at the end of the show later on this afternoon, we'll if you can send me um, some information. What we'll do is we'll put it in the wrap up. We we, we put a welcome. post up with any useful things from the show. So um, I've got I've got a good idea for the wrap up as well. Maybe people can send in some photos using some of the tips that you're uh, giving us. So I'll talk about that a bit later on. Oh, cool. Yeah, that'd be brilliant. Thank you. Um, so yeah, Snapseed. I. I teach non-photographers um, and they're all like, oh my God, it's so easy. Yeah, if you want to paint the light in, you go to the paintbrush. It's, you know, you want to crop something, you crop it. But there are loads of editing apps out there. Just use what is good for you. But if you haven't used any at all, I can totally recommend Snapseed. Um, okay, the next one is Photoshop Mix. I use this to put your, your logo on. It's it literally takes three seconds to put your logo on. Um, it's, you know, again, I can write that down for you exactly how to do it, but that's the easiest way that I can do this. All these are free, by the way. I don't pay for anything. God, no, you must be joking. Um, but yeah, totally. Um, Photoshop mix, yeah, can totally recommend that um, for adding your logo. Image size. This is brilliant. If you've got a press release to get out, if you want to do a poster or something, um, you know, use this it, again. It, oh God, it's so easy. Literally, um, this one's really annoying. It's it's plagued with adverts, but it's really expensive to buy it. So just just ignore the adverts. Sorry, I shouldn't say that, should I? <laughs> Probably not the best thing. So, um, and and this one, Photo Room, is amazing for removing backgrounds. Um, if you want anything white, you know, white background, or if you want to just make a funky Instagram advert or something like that. Um, again, that's really good as well. Um, so yeah, so that is like my, <laughs> sorry, it's like the verbal diarrhea going on there. Um, but yeah, so so that is, I mean, if any questions at all, please do. Yeah, what, what we'll do, Jeanette, is um, it's a good time in that actually, because we'll go to our, um, we've got our next section of the show where we're going to show the, the DW Live panel. And then we will come back and take some questions from people. So, guys, send in your questions for Jeanette or your tips, and uh, we'll cover them after the uh, after the DW Live panel. So, we've got this really good um, panel this week coming up. I'm sure Callum's got this ready to go. Um, look out for the extra special guests right at the end. Freddie Mercury from Queen and Queen Latifah and I'll tell you why because then four of us queens together can have a round of Jaeger bombs and have a royal good time oh yeah three people I would love to go to the pub with number one Tutankhamun I'm obsessed with ancient Egypt number two Michelle Obama great influencer and she has seen a lot and number three Boris Johnson he owes all of us a drink after this last year um, the three people are, number one, Prin Prince Harry. Now, I'm really not very good at celebrities and stuff, um, but I thought Prince Harry because he's minted, so he can pay for all the drinks all night. Rob Beckett is number two, the comedian, because I just think he's hilarious and I'm obsessed with his parenting podcast. It's so funny. And then I was chatting to a friend about this and 
they quite rightly reminded me that I need a girl there because I need to be able to go for a wee with somebody. Um, so number three, and this is how to rack my brains for this, but I think I'm gonna go with Daisy Mae Cooper. She's absolutely hilarious. I think she'd be really good fun and she'll be a chaperone for when I need to go for For myself, I'd love to go with uh, Billy Connolly, just Scottish icon, very, very, very funny. I'd also love to go with the other king, Henry Glasson, just to talk about football. And probably to catch up with my teenage crush, Anna Kulnikova. I think that'd be a good start. <laughs> my first choice would, of course, be Simon Rimmer, because I absolutely love Simon Rimmer. My second uh, partner to go to the pub with would be George Michael. Oops because he can provide some great music so I can dance with Simon Rimmer. And then finally, my third guest to come to the pub with me would be Paul the Oct Octopus. I'll Paul the Octopus. Now, Paul the Octopus can tell the futures, which is exactly what we need right now. Paul the Octopus was the one that got involved in um, deciding who was playing who in the World Cup. So I'd have Paul the Octopus. Okay, so that's my three people to go to the pub with. I'd say Adele, because I just think she would absolutely laugh. It should be a great to spend time with. Uh, Anita Rani, we could talk all about the countryside uh, and about her time on uh, BBC Women's Hour. And I definitely hate Stephen Fry because he's just so full of facts. Harrison Ford, because he's a legend in the acting world and I'd have hundreds of questions to ask him. Steve Attenborough, because he's just amazing and the things he's done, created, his ideas, his passions would be fabulous to talk about. And Kylie, because I am a massive Kylie Minogue fan. I think I'd probably have to choose Clarkson, Hammond and May. I think they'd be a good laugh in the pub. Um, and I'd be interested to hear some of their war stories. you got to love those llamas, haven't you? Big uh, thank you to Celia Gaze and the um, llamas from the Wellbeing Farm. They're absolutely amazing. They really made us chuckle when they came in this week. Guys, if you want to get involved with that, joining in, you know, if you've got something funny to say or something interesting to say, you know, we do have some serious questions as well. So um, we'd love you to join in with us there. So um Big thank you to everyone for taking part in that. That was really good fun. So um, if we can go back to Jeanette, are you still there? Yes, you, there you are. So Jeanette, we've got, we've got some questions um, and I've got a couple myself as well. So I'll ask you a couple that were in the group. Um, Michelle Flynn says, hi, Michelle. Um, any tips for taking photos in bright light? For example, snow um, or weddings with lots of white. You know, how do you compensate that? Is it a matter of... You know, just kind of touching the screen, you know, where it re, re sort the exposure out, or is there anything you can do? Um, it is about your exposure, totally. Um, the idea is that if you can underexpose it, you're going to keep those details in. So instead of just having a white dress, you're going to get the lace of the dress or the, the details of it, or for snow as well. Um, so yeah, underexpose, make it darker, and then brighten it up again afterwards. But you've kept the detail to start with. Fantastic. Okay. And any um, any rules? I mean, you know, Diane's always telling me off about this, about where the sun should be when you're taking a photograph, ideally. You know, you don't want to be facing the sun when you're taking the photograph and things like that. Have it behind you. That's right, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, if you've got a, a cracking shot, but, you know, the building's in the wrong place, there's not a lot you can do about that. You can't really pick up the building and move it. So you've got to work with what you've got, really. Um, shade is obviously the best because you haven't got this harsh sunlight coming on you. If you want to take pictures of people in the sun, um, the best thing to do is, and it's more than one person, or just get everyone to shut their eyes. And then you go on one, two, three, open, and you open your eyes. 
always look out for dark shadows under the eyes as well, um, which is where you can see. So just turn people round and see where the light is falling best. Um, you know, the rules of professional photography, um, you know, go with this as well. It's no different whatsoever, yeah. but, you know. Um, so, yeah, just work with the light. Look at it. Look what's going to look best for you and turn things around and see what, what's best. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's no kind of set. I mean, there's some basic guidelines, but there's no set rules. If something looks good in a silhouette, it's, you know, take the shot, I'd say, you know, or take both, oh, take it both ways if you can. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, backlighting is beautiful. If you've got that lovely sort of, I call it the ready brick glow, you know, like that goes around you and, and it's, it's fantastic to do that, uh, you know, that picture. Um, so, yeah, just take it. It's not the end of the world. If it doesn't work, move on and, and change it and do something else. Diane's telling me off here in the chat room for saying that I don't listen to her. Um, <laughs> so Matthew um, Matthew Wren Andrew has asked, any hot to top tips for using a site like Hootsuite when posting pictures across multiple sites? Is that something you know about, Jeanette? I'm not sure if you do Hootsuite. Uh, no. <laughs> you know, it's about uh, social media, you know, sharing it and things like that. Um, I think I think some of the things that you gave before, some of the like I use Canva a lot to resize photos and for different social media kind of, you know, it's all, I think it's also important what orientation you, you, you take the photograph of thinking of about what, what media you're going to put it on. That's really important, isn't it? To have a think about that. Yeah, definitely. And um, I, for some unknown reason, apparently portrait photos get a higher engagement on Instagram than landscape, which is oh. really interesting. I have no idea why. Um, but yeah, so when you take it, always think, okay, so if this is going on, on Instagram, for example, is it going to go in that little square? So when you've got the, the grid just grid up, is it just going to look like a blank space or are you actually going to see, you know, the image as well? So yeah, sort of have that in the back of your mind as to where the end product is going to end up. But who's sweet? No, I can't answer that, I'm afraid. I don't use it. I'm old school and just yeah, like I straight I don't use Hootsuite myself. I use, I, use something, I use something different, but um, similar, but not quite that. So um, I've got a question for you then. How, in terms of like when you're thinking about a photograph or a good photograph, how much of it is the thought process and how much of it is the technical aspects of actually doing it is it a mix of the both i mean do you, do you plan your photographs out to great that or you're very much on the spot just take it kind of person oh god no i never plan anything it all just happens <laughs> as, <laughs> as, as my social media feed shows you it literally just happens so um if i'm up in london i won't plan i obviously know where i'm going but it is a case of right okay it's been raining there's going to be puddles let's see what puddles we can get let's see it's beautiful sunshine let's see what the reflections light on here or you know it's all very much of a muchness i don't think you can plan too much because we have got the weather you've got things changing all the time you know and and it is literally yeah. a case of take it as you see it um and yeah so i'm very much off the cuff and just Take yeah, it, and know. I think it's very, very much the nature, very much the nature of having a, a smartphone is that it's there and then you don't have to, you know, a, big, a professional photographer would set up a shot and make it perfection. Whereas I think um, having a smartphone is very much about just seeing an opportunity. And a little tip I'd give guys would be, particularly for social media, from a social media side rather than a photography side, you know, take as much photos as you can and reportage and behind the scenes photos and portraits mm. like, you know, photos with people on are really popular on um, on social media, particularly like Instagram. So behind the scenes photos are always really quite hard to get right when you try and do one yourself. You see other people's, the thing with them, I think you see other people's and you think, oh, that looks amazing. You try and do it behind the scenes yourself and you think it looks rubbish. But to you, it looks rubbish. But I think to other people who are interested in what you're doing, it looks exciting. Yeah. But I think it's very much a matter of just keep snapping, you know, as much as you can, really, I would say. Yeah, a lot of it is about how you crop it as well. So you can take the picture as a, as a and then you think, actually, if I just crop that in, I will get that yeah. person, you know, chatting instead of everything else around it. So don't dismiss a photo straight away. Look at how you can crop it. And sometimes if it's really crappy lighting, stick it in black and white. <laughs> works wonders. Um, yeah. you know, you, um, and reportage works brilliantly for black and white as well. It really does. But one way, a little yeah. top tip as well to um, 
make it a little bit more subtle taking photos, especially for, you know, um, behind the scenes or street photography, anything like that. You can use your volume button to take the pictures. And also if you've got headphones, um, not wireless ones, um, wireless, how old do I sound? Um, you know, not AirPod ones. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. Yeah, yeah, not them, not Bluetooth ones. Um, you, you can Wired, use your volume yeah. button on there. So it doesn't look like you're actually taking a picture. Um, so that's yeah. another way that, you know, can be a bit more subtle about it. You can even get remote shutters as well, can't you? Shut, but you can even get a remote shutter button. The year. I know people, yeah. I know like your friends will do that. They'll have a hand in the pocket with the, on the button and they'll they'll take the photo of them. You know, they'll set it yeah. up and, and take the photo of themselves. Good. I've just got a couple more questions um, uh, from Rita in on YouTube. Hello to all the YouTubers. Um, any tips on taking pictures in a room with event lighting? Pinks and blues are always like really harsh. And I do know what you mean. Yeah. It's so hard. And to, yeah. You know, you get the block of all the different colours. Any tips on that or any settings on your phone that you can do? It is a bit of a nightmare. The best thing to do is when you go to edit them, and as I say, Snapseed is dead easy, go to your white balance. Your white balance is all about the colour temperature. Um, so the colour temperature of the light bulbs and the colour temperature of your camera very rarely match up. So if you go into Snapseed, you'll see white balance on there. And just if you normally, if you slide your finger to the left, the picture gets colder, slide the picture to the right, your picture, you know, um, it gets warmer. So you can gauge that by doing that. Um, but also is, you know, if you've got disco lights, um, you know, things like that, that is just literally a case of, I think, taking your time and, and waiting for the light to fall where you want it to fall. But as far as event lighting, you've got beautiful, you know, pink up lighters or something like that. Um, make your picture a bit lighter in editing don't do it straight away because you again you want to keep those details so just make it a little yeah. bit lighter in safety and then um you sort out your white balance as well that was the question i was just going to ask you is it better to just take the photograph dark or better to adjust it on your phone and then fix it so i guess it's it's probably better to fix it post once you've taken it really it's probably the best idea isn't it yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, because I mean, obviously, don't make it pitch black. If it's pitch black, you, you're screwed and you can't do anything with it. Um, so as long as it's not pitch black and as long as it's not blown out, and then you can keep yeah. those details in and you can edit it that way. Great. Well, I've got just got a couple more questions in the chat room. One from Louise Palmer, um, which is a really good question. Do you have any tips on storing photos on your phone? What's the best app to use and any methods for storing them? Because I guess you must take tons of photos. Yeah, take that for you. Um, mine will go up into the iCloud. So I, I pay for my iCloud storage, which I have no idea what that is. It's huge and ridiculous. So on an iPhone, I use yeah. iCloud storage. Um, I think you can use Google. Google, Google sure photos, Google, yeah. Google photos, yeah. Yeah, there is. Yeah, I'm, on, I'm on Android. And they, they yeah, you yeah. can do the same. Yeah, use them. Because also, if you lose your phone, they're secure and they're safe. Um, what I tend to do is if I go out and I'm on the train on the way home, I'll cull my photos on the way home. Um, you know, if I've taken five of the same one, just pick the best one and then you're doing it there and then. And you haven't got 10 million photos. You've only got five to worry about. Yeah. And another question from Michelle Flynn. This is a really interesting one. Now that lots of events are digital and online, what's the best way to capture that experience? Quite hard because you're just shooting a screen, aren't you? Or, you know, taking a screen you can. Dog, I guess. Yeah, screen grab, or you can do remote shooting. Um, so what you what you do is, um, so example, Harry and Meghan's um, engagement photo that was taken, they were in yep. LA, I think it's LA, isn't it? Where their photographer was in the UK. And basically you use an app where um, your photographer controls your phone or your iPad. Um, so oh, if wow. you can find a yeah, so it's it's like mind-blowingly, ridiculously, I have no idea. But that's how Vogue, that's how all the, the magazines managed to keep going all through lockdown. So, you you know, um, you do, it's basically remote shooting. Um, so you can actually have, um, and there's one guy, oh, I can't remember his name, but he recommends that you basically strap your phone to a can of beans with a hair tie um, so that it's yeah. up there. And the photographer like we'll guide you through and say right just move it up a little bit move it down a little bit right that's perfect so if you wanted to do that you would just have somebody you know get a photographer who can control your phone within the actual space it's in 
that's really amazing that because you know you might get somebody who's holding like a cookery masterclass and as the event organizer you might want to capture that picture that's not just on a taken of your your monitor so you could get them to set their phone up and then control it and take yeah. a photo of themselves wow that's um, a yeah. and, and you know what i never even knew you could do that that's really interesting yeah wow. then, great question as well it's mad. The picture then gets sent straight through to the photographer who edit it, edits it and then sends it straight back again. I've just started a little poll on the group as well um, to ask people, do you use what do you use your smartphone camera for? Um, Seven percent of people say holiday or leisure. Um, and then mo but mo the other the other off opportunity was business or both. And 94% of people use it for both. So everybody's using the camera. But I guess, you know, I saw I saw in the chat room when you mentioned about the grid lines, loads of people said, who knew? I've turned them on. I've put them on already. So, um, yeah, that's fantastic. So my uh, last question is, Jeanette, what can, how can people um, work with yourselves? I mean, I know you run various masterclasses and, and we'll put a link to your website and everything afterwards. But is this the kind of thing that you can hold a masterclass to um, a group online? Have you done that kind of thing where you've you've hosted it and kind of, you know, as a bit of entertainment, got them to do things and, you know, all that kind of stuff? Is that is that the kind of things you do? Yeah, I mean, the, the list is endless what you can do. So mainly what I do, we, um, we tend to do the um, virtual London ones where, as I say, I'm wandering around London, taking the pictures live editing live shooting so you can see exactly how you spot things you can also do um you know food ones so it's like right okay let's look at how we photograph food how we do that architecture as well so many different things fashion shoots when we can when we're allowed back again i'm going to be showing how you can work with a makeup artist work with a, um, a model as well um yeah, yeah so much and um so i've got another jet black squares in the northeast and becky up there she does the remote shooting as well i i'm i i'm yeah i leave that to her she's brilliant at it um so <laughs> she um yeah so she does the remote shooting so you know if anyone does want any remote shooting at all um then we can do that as well so yeah it's so much if there's anything you want um you know i can actually go to people's offices and do it there um yeah. and show them how and i always say you know it's better to actually have a session where you work every day if you've got neon lights in your kitchen for example you need to know how to work with that yeah. on a day-to-day -day basis um so yeah so either in person or online fantastic well um as i say we'll put all these links to you know your website and if you can drop me a line with all the, the pdf and the stuff and any useful things um We'll cover all those apps as well. I've written them all down um, that you guys can download. But I think people have really enjoyed this session. It's been really useful. So what I would like to do, everybody, is um, I'll tell you what, we'll do it in this thread. If you can, um, if you've learned any tips today from Jeanette, as in turning your phone upside down and just putting grid lines on, et cetera, et cetera. If you want to put some examples in this chat um, after the show, that would be a really cool thing. I'll have a go myself. I'll have a go outside come up with something arty and um <laughs> yeah I think that'd be a good a good bit of fun but Jeanette it's been really interesting thank you so much for um for sharing that with us it's been really good oh thank you so much for having me and um yeah as I say everyone should be able to enjoy photography now um and you've yeah. got the power in your pocket you can do it the power in your pocket what a line that is jet black squares the power in your pocket I love it <laughs> Okay, Jeanette, thank you so much. Um, so, guys, I will just wrap up the show with what is coming next in the next few weeks. If Callum has got a couple of slides, he's going to run for us. So, um, we've obviously just had Jeanette on with the masterclass. Um, a bit of a bit of a change. We've got a few things coming up now, a few different things um, that we're doing um, every two weeks. So, every other Thursday. We're going to be running a onboarding session for new web uh, for new members, a webinar for new members. So that's new members to Delegate Wranglers. So we're going to show them how to use the group, about all the hours, that kind of thing. Or if you want to uh, freshen up, please come and join us completely free. We'll put all the details on the group. Look out for them. Um, then our next show next week, the DW Live show, is a content marketing masterclass with Pauline Krasniak. Um, that's going to be really, really fantastic. Do not miss that one. Then we've got a Superstars webinar. So if you're thinking about joining our Superstars program and then following that, we've got a couple of really good um, masterclasses coming up. We've got a health and safety masterclass. 
particular particularly covering um, aspects of COVID and returning back to hotels and how to get yourselves ready with Rob Hayworth from um, Event Safety Plan. Hi, Rob. And also then a sales masterclass with the wonderful Mandy Jennings from Page Consultancy. So for all you venues, well, for everybody, really, we're all salesmen of either ourselves or our services. And then the one that's not listed on there is with Laura Capel abra who I know is in the chat room. And it's going to be a time uh, management masterclass. Who doesn't need that? Eh? I definitely do. So um, hope you can all tune into those guys in the next few weeks. So without any further ado, I'm just going to say, a big thank you to everybody involved with the show today. Every all you guys for watching um and listening in and all the comments in the chat room. Honestly, we we can't do these shows without you guys. And if you know, we're really, really grateful for all your engagement and please keep spreading the word about about it, about the group and um about these live sessions, and we'll keep bringing them to you. This is a series of 10. That was number four. So we've got another six left. So look out for them. We've got some great stuff coming up. Um, big thank you to Events Case for registration, to Dominic and the team for um, from Stream for all the services putting on this show and making it so funky and all the graphics and all the, everything else. And then um, also massive thank you to Jeanette for a great masterclass. What a great job she did. And also to Events, uh, our season sponsors, for all their support. Um, check them out, guys. So... We will see you next week. Have a lovely week. Uh, the sun's shining here. And, um, yeah, don't forget, llamas are the new goats. See you soon. <laughs>